What's up? This is Maddie Mullins, and you're watching Pit Cam TV. First of all, hey, Maddie. Hey. Nice, to, nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Round three, right? Or four? Oh, four, oh I my think. Gosh. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is going to be your first night on the Asking Alexandria tour. Mm -hmm. uh, you're coming right off the Parkway tour in Australia. Yeah. That must have been some tour. Yeah, totally. A lot of flying. We did like... <laughs> You know, 27 hours on the way there and then 36 hours with layovers coming from Australia to Europe and everything. So been hectic. But yeah, I mean, the tours are rad. I mean, over there, there's no better band to tour with than Parkway. So yeah. it was awesome to play for their fans and um, just Big crowds, giant crowds. Yeah. And just just cool seeing Australia in general. We love it over there. So yeah. yeah, wherever I go, whoever I talk to, people always tell me about how much they love touring Australia and how yeah. great the Australians are. Do you agree? Totally. Australian people are wonderful and the food is great and the culture is awesome. We, we really do love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're jumping right onto this tour, another big tour with Asking Alexandria. You guys must be exhausted. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think that we do, a, we've been touring for so long that we do a pretty good job at taking care of ourselves. We know what our limits are and we understand the importance of sleep and, and water and stuff <laughs> like that. So, um, no, we're all right. I mean, I think that any walk of life can be exhausting. You just have to treat yourself right. You know, whether it's a nine to five job or touring the world, like, you know, just make sure that you're giving your body and your mind uh, the necessities. What are your expectations like? I mean, it's been well since you've done a Euro tour. Uh, my expectations of this tour? Yeah. I have no idea, honestly. Um, it's like I, we've been in Berlin for a few hours, uh, so I, I couldn't even tell you. Um, usually after a couple shows, I'll be like, okay, this is what I can expect. Um, but I think sometimes it's better to go into things with no expectations at all, because then no matter what, it ends up being sweet. And you have Vance Warped Tour UK coming up. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be exciting, huh? Yeah, that's going to be great. <laughs> Get to see some homies. Like, we were just in Australia with the Word Alive, and so they're going to be there as well. So yeah. we're just kind of bouncing all over the world with those guys. It's good to see them. We didn't get a Vance Warped Tour this time. You remember last time you did Berlin, there was yeah. a Vance Warped Tour, but we didn't get one this year. Oh, so bummer. Yeah, but... You came here anyway, yeah. so... Yeah. <laughs> so we're here. That's um, cool. So uh, it's been, what, like a year and a half since Unconditional was released? I know you did a reissue recently. Yeah, yeah, just just a little over a year, I think, actually. Um, Tell me about this reissue. Yeah, it's it's called the Unconditional Deluxe uh -huh. reissue. <laughs> and it's uh, it's cool. We wanted to make it really special, so we put two brand new songs on it, songs that were going to be on the next record, but we decided to give them away early to make it really special. Um, the whole record was remixed and remastered. Mm -hmm. um, Kellen, our guitarist who writes all the instrumental stuff for, for the band, um, felt like some of the background stuff that was really vital to him didn't stand out quite enough, and um, some of the tones overall just didn't match up to what he dreamed the record would be um, so vocally the record remains the same but instrumentally it's totally different to him and to a lot of our listeners really love it um, so I'd say I recommend picking it up and checking it out I think it's a big deal mm. yeah but most of the songs have been out for a while how does the your relationship with these songs how does it change after you played it for for a while honestly yeah the, the truth of uh, to that question is um, when, when we were writing the record, um, a lot of this stuff was really hard for me to talk about and hard for me to admit, um, but I think it becomes therapeutic. The more that you talk about it, um, the better it gets, and, and I think that that's why therapy is, is, is so vital for people that are struggling with stuff, and I think just talking about things, getting it out, um, is, is so important. So the more we play the songs, the more I realize that um, every part of my life is just a season and that things get better, and mm. um, so playing these songs is great. It's awesome. Any songs that have become favorites that weren't favorites uh, when you wrote them? That's a good question. With you um, or with the crowd. Yeah, totally. Um, writing uh, the song Sleepless Nights was really tough because it's really honest and it's, uh, it's ugly, you know, uh, the, when life looks like that. Um, but I think the song somehow, you know, because it's so honest, offers hope to a lot of people that struggle with anxiety. And so it's pretty cool. And uh, do you get the same feedback from the fans or have they uh, given you any feedback on what kind of songs they prefer? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious which songs make the biggest impact. You know, I think songs like Legacy um, that are a blatant message, you know, that you have purpose, that you have meaning, that um, 
the world is a better place with you mm. in it. Um, and songs about addiction and struggle, you know, like vices or songs like Sleepless Nights or anything like that. I think when people can relate to something, they can use it as an outlet. Um, and even though that doesn't really quite make sense, I guess, like in, in the real world, you know, like when, when you, in music, something that's, that's so special and when you, when you talk about your problems and when you have something to relate to, even if it's not necessarily a blatant message of hope, it still offers hope somehow, which is incredible. I don't really understand how it works. It's amazing. How do you pick your set list? I mean, you have a, several albums to choose from I now. Don't. I don't pick it because I, 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 I end up, yeah, I end up just arguing with the band when we do that, you know, like, hey, let's, let's cut this song or cut this song and add this new song in this. I'm like, no, but it's so important that we play those songs. Yeah. So, so I have to stay away from it. Um, Kellen and Jake usually go back and forth and talk with management and they're like, you know, what's, what songs do we want to push live and what songs do, are we able to take out at this point? And, um, that's just a stressful conversation. I don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> But a lot of it has to do with how the fans respond to the songs live. Or yeah, totally. I mean, you have to make smart business decisions as well, saying, you know, like, this song is new and we think it's yeah. really valuable, so we need to start incorporating it into the set. But when we do that, that means we have to take this song out, yeah. which is tough. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not, not a conversation for me. So is there a new album in the works? I know the fans are waiting. Always, yeah. I mean, it, we, we write all year long. Um, But we've been on, on the road pretty consistently. We did Warp Tour in America, and then we did that Australian tour. We did, we're doing this tour right now. When we go home from this tour, it'll be like uh, holiday season, mm -hmm. and we'll be writing and recording. Um, but we write a lot, you know, like we, we write a lot even when it's not time to write. So we're always prepared, and um, if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we just do that. You, um, you see a lot of the bands in the scene changing right now. Uh, some of them have changed their sound like radically, like Bring Me the Rise and even Parkway Drive on yeah. their new album. Yeah. Is this something we can expect from you guys as well, or have you thought about it? I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of respect for, for Bring Me and for Parkway, uh, for being able to, to really just become something different on every record I think that's awesome and and it's a risk as well it, totally yeah 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 I think it's amazing that they're able to do it and have a, a lot of success with doing it mm. um, for us like we just write what comes out I, I, I wouldn't say for this next record that we have some big goal to become something different mm. um, you know we want to write music that we're proud of that we like to play and um, there might be some some changes c that people aren't expecting but I don't, I don't know if it'll be anything drastic you know We're still going to sound like Memphis Mayfire. Yeah. So do you have any big tours coming up after this one, or is that just holiday season? On your yeah, we, we do. We've got some really great touring plans in the works. We haven't announced, we're far from announcing it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for talking totally. to me. Yeah, thank you. My left arm is uh, the first arm I did, and down here I've got a skull. It says, the end is near. This is the seven-headed beast from Revelation in the Bible. Uh, he's going to devour the baby that the woman dressed in the sun with the moon below her feet is giving birth to. Uh, it's all just kind of a part of Revelation up here. I've got a hand that's holding three playing cards. 